Smart TVs, game consoles, even sound bars these days, they've got apps built right in. You've got access to Netflix and Hulu without adding anything else. So why in the world would you want something like this? Fact of the matter is some smart TV systems just really aren't that great. And the smart TV stuff that you get inside a game console is actually kind of limited compared to what you can get with a dedicated streaming device. Then you have to talk about streaming sticks. They're way less expensive and they're a smaller footprint. You can put them in your pocket. Uh, why would you go for a streaming box like the Roku Ultra here over a streaming stick? Well, we're going to answer that question and show off what this can do that all that other stuff can't starting right now. Let's unbox this guy, shall we? So lift the top there. And here we go. Now this looks exactly like the Roku Ultra from last year and a lot like the Roku 4 that came before it. We're gonna dig into this a little bit more deeply in just a moment. Got some product literature there. The remote, which is a big part of this. We're gonna be talking about this remote quite a bit as we go through this review. And then accessories, I think in here. Ah, yes, so we've got our power cable. Gonna have to make room for that guy. Some batteries for the remote, of course. These are gonna be earbuds. We'll pop those open in a moment and some ear tips for those earbuds. So uh, if we set the accessories aside and take a closer look at the box itself, really what we wanna see is on the back. That ethernet port is a big reason why this product exists. When you're streaming 4K video, say you have like a home media server or something like that, this is essential for stable uh, streaming. And also it really helps when you're streaming 4K HDR from uh, Netflix or Amazon uh, Prime Video. HDMI output, of course. We've got a power cable there. Uh, we've got a USB slot over here. This little guy on top uh, allows you to call the remote. So if you lose the remote, you press this and the remote chimes. We'll show you that in a moment. And then, of course, you've got uh, Roku's cute little uh, tab right there. Oh, and one more thing, right below the HDMI port is a micro SD card slot. That is for storage of apps. So you can either store apps in the cloud and only download them when you use them, or you can expand the storage and hold as many apps as you possibly can afford. Yes, Roku Ultra, I agree, we should get started. But before I begin pressing buttons, let me just point out that while we have the Roku Ultra sitting here as a set-top box, uh, it doesn't actually need to be visible at all. In fact, you can hide it behind the TV. Part of the reason for that is that the remote actually operates via Bluetooth, not infrared. So you don't have to have line of sight, you can hide this thing away. Uh, we just wanted to keep it here for visibility sake and demonstration purposes. Now, we'll go ahead and get started with the uh, sign-in process with Roku. If you don't have a Roku account, you'll want to create one. And if you do have a Roku account, let's say you have other Roku devices or maybe even a Roku TV elsewhere in the house, the great thing about Roku is that it will automatically take all of your preferred apps and get them loaded. So you don't have to go through and pick and choose the apps that you want on the Roku. It already knows what you like and it's gonna put it on there and guess what? you should already be signed in to Netflix and Amazon and Hulu already. All right, so after the Roku self updates, it's gonna restart and then it's gonna prompt you to either grab your phone or your laptop and sign in at roku.com. Now, if you have an account, uh, you'll just log in there or you'll create one. I have an account and actually I misspoke earlier. Um, it doesn't automatically sign you into your apps, but it gives you the opportunity to do so from this screen. So it's gonna ask you what your interests are. It's gonna suggest a bunch of apps for you. It will automatically detect the ones that you already subscribed to and then you'll have an opportunity to click sign in here. And part of the process of setting up the Roku will be you log into your various services so that when you're done here, everything will be signed in on the Roku itself. Yay, we are all done. And yeah, you know what? This takes a while because I think it installed something like 128 apps, many of which I don't actually want, but that's you know really beside the point because I'm gonna be able to order them exactly how I want to. So you are gonna have to go through a little bit of uh, an intro here. It's a, sort of a tutorial on how to use Roku. This will be really helpful for people who've never used this device before. Roku is super easy to begin with, but you know, when you toss a tutorial on top of it like this, virtually anybody can get up and running without any extra help. As I mentioned before, it's going to uh, pre-install a bunch of channels you didn't ask for, along with ones that you did. Uh, and if you wanna get rid of them, again, hit the star, and then just hit remove channel. If you wanna clean up your interface, it's really no big deal to do that. As you can see here, I'm removing an app. 
If you wanna add channels, that's real simple too. Just click on add channels. It'll take you to the channel store uh, where you can sort through them or if you know exactly what you're trying to get, uh, you can use the voice search option. Now that we're all set up, let me show you some of the cool things that Roku OS and the Roku Ultra specifically can do. One of Roku's greatest strengths is in its search. So let's search for something really quick. Show me Tom Cruise movies. Now, the great thing about Roku Search is that it's completely platform agnostic. It doesn't care where the content is coming from. It's just going to tell you what's available, where you can get it, and how much it's going to cost. So here we have Fallout. I can watch it for nine bucks or subscribe to services that offer it. Uh, it looks like I can get it from Prime Video if I have a subscription, which I do. I just haven't logged in yet. Uh, Epix offers it as well. Uh, Hulu requires a subscription, but th those are all places I could watch this movie uh, for free if I have a subscription. Let's try another one. Show me Stranger Things. Stranger Things is actually available outside of the Netflix platform, believe it or not, but the first uh, hit here is gonna show us that we can watch it on Netflix. Uh, so that's the kind of power that you get with a Roku search. It doesn't matter what you're looking for. A few more things I wanna show you about the remote. One, over here we have volume keys. It automatically is going to uh, detect your TV settings and allow you to control the volume uh, and mute if you want to, which is really great because if all you're ever gonna do is watch your Roku, you don't even need your TV remote anymore. The power button and those uh, volume keys are gonna take care of your basic functions. Also, we have the traditional uh, hotkeys down here to automatically launch Netflix, Sling TV, Hulu. In this case, they've also added ESPN. Um, but say you want to be able to uh, automatically launch HBO Now. It's not here, but you've got two keys here that you can program, so check this out. Launch HBO Now. That voice command is now gonna happen. I'm gonna press and hold the one and in a couple of seconds it beeps and now number one is going to launch hbo now anytime i want to i can also program it to do a certain search show me john wayne movies i don't know why i picked john wayne but now that that's in there i press and hold two and now number two is set to search for john wayne movies you can program these to be whatever you want the cool thing is you just have to do the search and press and hold the button so the Roku remote is one of the best things about this device, especially with the addition of those two programmable keys. And uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but it does have a headphone jack and you can plug in the provided JBL earbuds so that you can listen privately if you want to. The only drag about that is that it tends to drag down the battery life pretty quickly on a remote, which is why I wanted to mention that there is also the Roku app, which not only lets you control the Roku device with your smartphone or tablet, but you can also listen privately through your phone, either the phone speaker or connected headphones or wireless headphones. So there's a number of different ways you can enjoy your content privately uh, without actually having to use the volume on the television if you want to. The entire Roku experience is based on Roku OS and it's really great search capability and then you get some pluses with the hardware. The reason you want to get a Roku Ultra like this is because you're a power user. You watch a lot of 4K content, you want that Ethernet connection, and you want the most lightning fast experience you can possibly get. There is zero lag with this platform and apps launched almost instantly. So that's really why you want to go for this particular device. Otherwise, you probably want to look at one of Roku's sticks, which offer the same voice remote capability and 4K HDR stuff. It's fantastic. If there is one knock against the Roku Ultra, it's that it doesn't support Dolby Vision, which is a different flavor of HDR. I really don't understand why that is. It's such an advanced device, and if you're gonna spend 100 bucks on a streamer, I feel like it should have it. Maybe the next iteration will. But for now, it remains the best high-end streaming device that you can buy right now. Folks, thanks for watching. How do you like to stream? Leave a comment down below, and also if you have questions, leave them there. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you would. In the meantime, here's a couple of other videos we think you might like, and as always, visit digitaltrends.com for the latest tech news and reviews.